Good morning and welcome back to COVID Computer Camp. This is our last session, boys and girls. I know it's very sad. Mr. T's taking a vacation and I'll be gone for a few weeks. I'll be back with more live streams in July. Just hang tight. But we're just going to take a, a couple of weeks and regroup and then we'll be ready to go again. So um, stay tuned and um, subscribe to this channel and you will get all the announcements about upcoming events. We'll make sure to keep you guys apprised or um, shoot us an email via info at chromeworks.ca and just make sure that, we're, that we have um, your coordinates so that we can put you on our mailing list and um, let you know what's happening as well. Okay, so we were had some weird stuff happening in our Asteroids game the other day. Let me show you. All right, so um, this is our Asteroids game. And um, um, so it looked like it was running fine, but then we started to run into some trouble. I think the problem started with our UFOs. So I'm going to make my UFOs visible again here. And... Look at the block mageddon that happens here when I start playing the game. So click the green flag. So my guy is moving nicely, he's shooting. But look what happens once these guys start breaking up into little pieces. They end up smashing into all kinds of stuff and going to smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. And then eventually at some point this starts happening. Wow! That's crazy. And it just turns into craziness, okay? so. My initial thought was this was a bug in the code, but it's not actually a bug. What's happening is um, the um, asteroids are hitting the UFOs on the screen. The UFOs are um, programmed to collide with the um, with the asteroids and destroy the asteroids, but it doesn't destroy the UFOs. So the UFO sits there and keeps destroying more and more asteroids and destroying them over and over again, basically. So when we fix our UFOs and make them able to be destroyed by asteroids, all these problems will fix themselves. So uh, it was just us getting a little bit ahead of ourselves in the code. So today we're going to fix our, uh, our spaceships and add a few more things and just tidy up the game and get it ready to go. But it looks like we're doing pretty well already. We're, uh, we've got asteroids moving around, we're shooting them, and everything looks really great. So um, let's get coding, guys. Um, we have a little bit more code to do on our main spaceship sprite, so we'll get to that first. So we are inside the when I receive start round. So remember, guys, uh, I have a working file that I'm working on right now that has all the code that you need to make this file. I'm going to paste it back into the chat again. There you go. So if you ever get stuck, just um, let me save right now. When, if you ever get stuck, just um, reload the file and all the code that I've been working on up until this point will be refreshed on your screen and you'll uh, be ready to go. Okay, so we're going to start working on the part that says when uh, start round. So where is the start round? Still looking for it. Hold it. When I receive start round here, it is on the bottom left. I need to add some stuff underneath, so I'm going to make some room. Just move some of these functions out of the way. No. Okay, I almost deleted that by accident. That was a scary thing. All right, let's just zoom in a little bit. Now we're good to go. All right, go to X, Y. So um, we've just finished uh, uh, adding to our forever in here. And now we need another if statement inside the forever and underneath this go to X, Y. And that's where we're going to be doing the collisions with our ship. When we hit asteroids or saucers, we're going to be an X spaceship, of course. So uh, I'm going to go down and grab an if statement from my control blocks. And we're going to put it right underneath the go to, but inside the forever. Now we need to be touching a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, so let's go grab an, a couple of... We actually need two ors and an and here. So we need to check if we're touching anything bad. And we also need to check and make sure that our shields aren't turned on as well. Because if our shields are turned on, of course, we're not going to take any damage. So I've got three different or statements here plus an and statement. I'm going to drop it all into the if here. And let's start building this out. So we need to be touching a bunch of stuff in these or statements. Let's go to our senses. And we'll grab the touching block here, touching mouse pointer. 
and we're gonna fill it up a couple of times here. So we want to be touching or not touching, of course, asteroid. And we also not want to not touch uh, the small saucer and also the large saucer. There we go, that's all our things that we can't touch. And we need to make sure that in that as well as uh, touching one of those things, that our shields are turned off if we're gonna take damage. So we're gonna check and see if that shield variable is equal to um, zero. So if, let's put a zero on the right hand side here, and on the left we'll put that variable shields. So if our shields are off and we touch something, we're dead. If our shields are on, of course, it'll just ignore it because that's what shields are all about. All right, um, so inside here, let me save my work again. Inside this if statement, we need a bunch of stuff. We need a little bit of a weight here. Again, we're setting up weights uh, just to tiny, tiny proportions here, just to make sure that stuff happens in the right order. So um, if you ever have, if you're suspicious that two things are happening at the same time, so I've got weight 0.02 seconds. So sometimes you send stuff off, like in collision events, especially one thing is touching another thing. Both of them have to delete themselves. Both of them have to cause uh, effects on a third thing, maybe. If everything's happening simultaneously, sometimes you can have stuff ha happening in the wrong order. Like one thing has to delete itself first or it won't send the proper message to the other thing telling it to delete itself, uh, for example. So that's why we add these little teeny delays. Sometimes even zero seconds is enough to um, push one thing that's happening simultaneously to happen just a titch after the first thing. And so we'll, so that's what we do. Um, so after we await, we're just going to hide. Let's go to our looks menu. We're going to hide. And then we're gonna broadcast an explode message. Remember we created the explosion just at the end of the day yesterday, broadcast explode. And um, that uh, will, um, uh, after we've hit our main spaceship, the exploded version of the spaceship will appear on top of it and create the illusion that you've been exploded. A little animation will play and um, your wreckage will go flying through space and then disappear. Okay, we're gonna play a sound here as well to say that we've exploded. So let's go to our sounds. We're gonna go, pl it looks like play sound until done here, okay. Play sound until done, which is bang medium. It's a very short sound anyway, so it won't really have that much effect on stuff. And then we're gonna change our lives. Of course, our variable for lives has to go down because we've died once. So let's change lives by minus one. And let's wait another one second before we uh, reset ourselves. So we'll go back to our control box, grab a wait one second. And then we're gonna broadcast a new message, which is start round, which is gonna get the whole shebang going again. So broadcast, start round, there we go. Now we're gonna put one more if statement underneath there in case we're dead. So let's go grab an if statement. We'll say if lives are less than one, we like to say less than one instead of equal to zero in, some, in case something freaky happens and you lose two lives at once. It happens every once in a while, some weird glitch in the code or something. So this is a nice way to uh, make sure that doesn't happen. If our lives are less than one, then we're gonna broadcast game over. So let's go back to our events, broadcast a game over message. We don't have one of those yet, so let's type that out. Game over. Almost done here, and then we'll take a break and save. And let's go to our control blocks, and we're gonna grab a block that says stop all. Oh, we don't actually wanna stop all, we just wanna stop this script to stop ourselves from, um, from uh, doing any of this other stuff until we respawn ourselves, until we get a new message to respawn. Okay, um, well actually that's the game over. We, don't, we, we won't respawn actually after this if, if our lives are gone, right? And so we're just gonna stop our spaceship and um, everything's gonna uh, remain the same from there uh, when the game ends. Okay, so that's it, I'm gonna save. And that is everything to do with the ships. I think we've actually finished the last part of the ship. So if we've coded this correctly, fingers crossed. Um, 
then we should be able to crash into asteroids and die. A little explosion graphic should appear as well over us when we die. So let's give it a little look and see what's going on here. Oh, I should hide my, um, I'm gonna hide my UFOs as well so they don't accidentally collide with meteors and mess up my life here. All right, now we're testing, here we go. And my motion has stopped. Okay, I've done something to disable the movement on my ship. That is weird. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick break and figure out what's going on and um, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> that was a lot longer break than you guys probably think it was. We spent about 15 minutes trying to noodle this problem and figure it out. Thanks to uh, Chris and Maddox and Deck who all offered suggestions, and in the end, none of them worked. Uh, we had a look at Jeffrey's code, which is uh, working flawlessly, and we're trying to figure out what was different between his version and my version, and we could not figure it out. And finally, Frida came up with a fantastic idea, which is, let's just steal the working code from Jeffrey. And um, so we, we, took, we went to his file, grabbed that when I started the clone block, dropped it into my backpack, and deleted the old when I started the clone, put the new one in, and now our game is working beautifully. Let me show you guys. So let's play. Asteroid. And you can see our asteroids are deleting themselves nicely. Whoa, wow. Suicidal, oh, okay, good. All right, I died. Good, so everything's working beautifully here. Abby, what were you saying? Oh, my stream paused on Discord. Okay, let me just, sometimes when I click on it, it gets going again, or when I maximize my window. Okay, there we are, we're good now. Uh, anyway, so that is running. Now, unfortunately, I cannot tell you where my code is wrong. Um, so you are gonna have to download my working file or the finished file, which is gonna be on my website after today as well. So um, just go to my website and download the finished file. And even if you're working on your own version and if you can't figure out the error, I also all my documentation is printed here as well. So um, if you can't fix my problem using the documentation, what I would suggest is just open up Jeffrey's file, the, uh, the finished Chromeworks Asteroids file and grab that when I started the clone. Let me show you how to do it. I'm gonna open my backpack, which is right at the bottom of the screen here. And all I have to do is drag the code into it and then close the backpack up and then go over to my other file and drag it back out again. And I'll, you can pull anything out of this backpack. For example, I've got a, um, a little uh, one block script, or I, gotta, I just gotta pull something small out. Here's a little script that uh, I don't even know where it is now. This is a problem though, here it is. So this is a, uh, a little uh, thing that we were using for a shooter file or something back in the past. And so I've stored that there. Unfortunately, they don't have names, they all say script, but it is a good way to move stuff back and forth between files. So your backpack is uh, something I haven't used very often here, but it worked uh, really well here. Okay, so we are officially done with our spaceship. Everything's working beautifully here. I don't think there's even a little bit of code left to do on this. So let's jump over to the um, saucers now and start working on them. There's quite a bit of code, but some of it's already been done and some of it we're gonna duplicate. We of course don't have to reinvent the wheel for both saucers. So um, I'm gonna save my file one more time and let's go over to our large saucer and start coding that. So we've already got the wraparound screen function and we should have that physics block too. Oh, there it is. So I'm gonna right click, go clean up blocks. That will put everything back together again. So we've got this prefab code, all the, um, the um, trigonometry we were talking about before and also the screen wrap stuff. So we don't have to worry about any of that. Um, let's go grab a green flag and start coding. So events, green flag, zoom in. All right, the first thing we wanna do um, to our saucer is make sure that no matter what direction they're going in, they're always upright. So you guys remember we can lock um, objects into place so they can't rotate by going over to the direction block here and clicking this little middle button to lock your directions. I'm gonna show you a way to do it in code though as well. So um, over in our blue sensing blocks, there's a block here that says 
set rotation style, or maybe is it in the dark blue motion? Oh, it's in the motion block, sorry. Here it is in the blue motion block. So there's an object here right towards the bottom that says set rotation style. And you can change it to the three different styles. Make, uh, force it to go only left and right, not rotate, or tell it not to rotate at all, or tell it to rotate freely, basically, are your choices. So we're gonna go left right there, and then we'll stop our guys from, uh, from, oh, we actually wanted to say don't rotate at all. So let's just say don't rotate. Okay, we're gonna switch our costume. So let's go to our looks. We'll go switch costume to large saucer. Notice there's a costume here that's called bullet. This is something that Jeffrey likes to do in the code. He actually has the clones turn into bullets briefly and then turn back into clones again. And he says it gives them better control over the bullets. Um, I, um, I'm not, I don't quite understand uh, what the point is of it because uh, I, I often do it a different way, but let's stick with his method because um, Jeffrey, as I've mentioned before, knows a ton more about coding than I do. So we're gonna stick with his idea. Let's set a variable here. We'll go to our variables. We're gonna set speed to two. Whoop. To and how did that transition? Sorry, I thought I transition. Let's have a quick key set up or something for that. And I hit it by accident. Okay, so set speed to two. Um, I was just playing around with my tr uh, software the other day. And um, I think I inadvertently added a quick key that I wasn't supposed to. Okay, um, so set speed to two. Then we're going to hide because this guy's going to make clones of himself. So let's go looks. We'll grab a hide here. And we're going to wait. Oh, wow, quite a while. So um, Jeffrey put down 50 seconds here. I think we should put a random wait time here for these guys to come out. So let's tell him to wait uh, and we'll pick a random number. Let's tell him to wait from um, 10 to 30 seconds. All right. And then of course we're gonna make our new guy. So let's go forever. So after we finish waiting, we're gonna we're going to point our guy in a random direction inside the forever here. Point in direction. Oh, actually, we're gonna go. Yeah, point in direction, and inside this bubble, we have to put a random number between one and three hundred and sixty. Okay. Um. Now our guy is spawning in the middle, so we're gonna move him over to the edge of the screen. These are This is one of the things that Jeffrey loves to do too. He'll, he spawns stuff in the middle of the screen and then tells it to move way off the screen. He tells it to move 600 steps and then turn around. He's facing in the wrong direction. So we'll tell him to turn 180 degrees to the left. He's not actually gonna physically turn because his rotation is locked, right? And then he's gonna create a clone of himself. So, um, and what's gonna happen, I guess, is each time he's created, he's gonna come from either the left or the right-hand side of the screen. I think that's why Jeffrey's done this. So he set it up so that it comes from off screen, from the right the first time, and then the next time it'll flip and it'll come from the left instead. Just a little clever coding trick he did here. Okay, let's go to our control blocks. Here's where we create the clone of ourselves once we've faced everything in the right direction. And then we're going to wait um, again. Oh, and we're stuck in this forever loop here. So now once the first guy appears, uh, we have to keep waiting a random amount of time here. So I'm just gonna grab the same pick random. We're just gonna do that. So Jeffrey thought the first big guy shouldn't appear until 50 seconds in the game, but I think that's too long to wait. So I think 10, Maybe even 10 to 20 seconds is good for the first. No, we'll go. <laughs> so you guys can customize this the backspace key. All right, good to know it's my backspace key that's accidentally forcing me to do a transition. I just thought I'd try that out, but I forgot how often I use that backspace key for other stuff. So uh, we could be in for some trouble here if I have to delete anything. Let's pray I don't make any mistakes, guys. All right. Um, what so we're gonna wait a random amount of time um and that's good 
Now we need a, um, I'm not going to, we're gonna, just going to blast through and finish this saucer before we take our next break. So I'm just going to keep plowing through here. Let's go tell it what to do when it starts the clone now. First thing we're going to do is show. So let's go to our looks menu. We'll go show. I have saved my file, by the way, those of you who are nagging me. Um, and set. Now we're going to tell it to go to, um, it, we're going to use that position X, position Y system that we set up for our, all our other stuff. We we're, gonna, we're still using that here. So the first step in that is always to lock your position to your, your position X to your actual X position. So we're going to do that right now. Let's go set variables, variables, set variable, and we're going to call it set position X to our X coordinate which is our X position. I'm going to get out a Y position because I know I need that in a second. And we're just going to go set position Y to our Y position. There we go. So that's good. Now we need to tell it um, that if it's costume number is two, if it's a bullet, so if it's costume number is two, it will become a bullet basically, which means it will start shooting. So we're going to grab an if statement. We'll say if costume number equals two. Maddox says he's figuring out what was glitching the asteroids. I'm going to um, talk to you after the break, Maddox, and uh, maybe I can report it back to my audience when we get that uh, done. So um, we will chat in a minute, my friend. All right, um, let's grab an equal sign in here. If costume number is equal to two. So if I'm a bullet, then I have to start behaving like a bullet, basically. Let's go to our costume number, which is under looks. We'll go to costume number. So if costume number is, to, is two, we need to do a new function that here that says is bullet. So that means it's uh, what to do if you've been turned into a bullet, which is a strange situation for a spaceship, but um, you got to do what you got to do. Okay, we're going to go make a new block in our my block section here. We're going to call it is bullet. And we'll code that in just a second. But we need to put that is bullet block in here under the under the if statement. And now underneath the if statement, we can start, uh, we can add another forever, which will control our guy's movement, I think. Oh, no. So wait one second, switch costume to bullet, create a clone of myself, and then switch costume back to saucer. All right, that is weird. Okay, so, all right, I'm not sure I completely understand Jeffrey's code here, but let's go have a look here. Let's go wait one second, switch costume. Let's go to our looks menu, switch costume. So after one second, he's going to fire his first bullet, basically. Oh, he's just going to fire a bullet every second, right? I think that's what's happening here. So we're going to switch costume. This is making a little bit more sense. So switch costume to bullet. Then it's going to create a clone. And when it creates a clone of itself, it's not going to create a spaceship. It's going to create a bullet, right? So let's go create clone of myself. Then before we even have time to see that the graphic has changed, we're going to switch back to UFO again, to large saucer. And um, and so we're gonna shoot once every second and uh, it's gonna do it by just briefly, just for a split second, turn into a bullet, change, create a clone of yourself and then um, the bullets are working. Now the bullets, once they get created, have to start moving and that's what happens inside that is bullet code. So um, let's do that next. So let's go grab an is bullet. Uh, oh no, we actually have the is bullet here. Let's define that. Save my file again. So uh, the first thing we want to do is we want our bullets to be able to rotate. So we have to turn off that rotation style. So we're gonna go to our rotation styles, which are right at the bottom of the blue motion blocks. Grab set rotation style and tell that it can rotate all around. So this guy, the bullets are allowed to rotate. Um, set the bullet speed. So let's go to our variables. We're going to set speed to six. We're going to um, have him aim 
in a random direction, I think. So it says here, point towards my ship, but I think that's wrong in the code because um, the small guy is going to aim at you, the big guy is not. So let's go point towards um, my ship. No, so we're just going to point in random direction. Let's do that. Point in direction. And we're going to grab a random number and say random from 1 to 360. Man, there's a lot of code in there. Like, I warned you, it's complicated. Space button again. Stay calm. Your vacation's starting in a half an hour, in an hour. Just stay calm, Mr. T. Stay calm. All right. Um, we're going to point in a random direction. And then we're going to wait two seconds. So let's go to our uh, control block. So wait two seconds. And then we're going to delete the clone. So after two seconds, the bullet's going to self-delete if it doesn't hit anything. Okay, so that should get him shooting. The bullets aren't wrapping or doing anything else, but let's just give it a try right now and see if our aliens are showing up. I don't want to wait forever for my first alien to show up. So we're going to tell it to wait um, from one to, so from maybe three to five seconds. We're going to change this later, guys. I'm just doing this for testing purposes, right? All right, here we go. Green flag. And where's our alien? Hasn't appeared yet. Is our alien invisible? I think you hit it. Uh, can you say that a little louder, Abby? I think you hit it, like you pressed it, like, get, like... Oh, I hit it right away? And that's why it disappeared? Alien, you hit them. No, like, you, on the eye, you changed it, I think, to, like... But you, t eye. you hit them. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Just a second. You hit the... You know, the large saucer has no eye, not... So you can't see it in show. Oh, oh I, I went, yeah, I went and and, sh okay. and made it hidden, right? Oh, I thought you said I hit them, and I didn't understand how I could hit them. All right, that makes a little bit more sense now. Okay, so I've uh, turned it to visible. Hold it. So it is it visible? No, I, I it has to, oh, yeah, hold it. So there it is at the edge of the screen. It's showing up there, but it's not moving around yet. Okay. Um, there's still a little bit more code to do, guys. So I think we we should probably keep going. The guy, the um, guy is visible, but he um, he doesn't have any move code yet. We haven't done anything to make him move yet. So there is actually still a little bit more to happen here. All right, let's um, let's keep plowing through this, guys, because uh, I really would like to get this saucer done. So let's. Uh, we need a second um, when I start the clone, and that's going to control the audio effects here. So let's, um, I think I need to be a little bit bigger here. So when I start as a clone, we're gonna go if costume number equals one. So let's grab an equal. So if we're a saucer and not a bullet is what we're doing here. We'll go costume number, which is down at the bottom of our looks menu. If costume number equals one, then we're gonna repeat uh, a bunch of times. Let's go control. We'll grab a repeat block here. We're going to repeat 15 times. What we're going to do is play the sound over and over and over again until the guy gets killed. Um, so when his costume changes, of course, he's going to um, change. So what I think what's going to happen is that 15 times is going to go really fast. This is a short sound. Let me show you the sound. Let's go to our sounds menu. Play sound. Saucer big. And I'll play that for you. So basically 15 times per second is about um, the amount of time it's going to do. And then at the end of one second, it's going to turn to a bullet, shoot, and then it's going to turn the sound off. This is an if-else statement, by the way, guys. Oh, man. Just another one of the things I've done wrong today. I need a vacation. Okay, here we go. All right, so I've moved all that into an if-else statement. And so the otherwise, if we're costume two, the otherwise is play sound, still play the sound. So why are we, so I think the idea is if we don't do this, the um, the sound is gonna stop when we change it to bullets. This is some kind of a workaround that Jeffrey did to make sure that the sound keeps playing continuously. Um, oh, and we're gonna play until done as well. Play sound until done. 
All right, so now our UFO should be making noises. They're still not moving, but let's see if we can hear that sound. Yeah, there's our UFO sound, which is great. Um, all right, and one more thing. This is where we're gonna do our movement, guys. Trust me, this is gonna work after here. So let's go when I start as a clone under our control blocks. We'll do one more block of code here. Let me save my file. And then this is gonna work. Really honest, it's gonna work. Okay, let's go forever. We're gonna do a couple of things. I'm gonna move it. We're gonna use some of our my blocks now. We're gonna go move in direction. We're gonna go wrap around the screen. This is the same thing we did to get everything else moving, the asteroids as well, right? We just ran these little scripts. Then we're gonna go to our XY position. Go to position X, position Y. So let's go grab pause X and put it in the X. We'll grab pause Y and put it in the Y. Now we need an if statement here um, for our destruction actually. So yeah, so this sh actually, so we're gonna add that little bit in a second. I just wanna test and make sure our UFOs are moving right now because that should be all the code we need. So green flag. And there's our UFO beautiful it's shooting and everything. Let's see if they can shoot me. Kind of hard to get hit by it though because it's shooting randomly. All right, well, I am getting destroyed when I ram into it. Beautiful, something's working for once, that's excellent. Um, okay, we've got a little bit more code on the UFO, so let's just stick to it. That's the, the, um, the code that's gonna make um, our saucer get destroyed if we shoot it. Right now, we it's indestructible. So let's go grab an if statement, control if, if touching projectile or asteroid. So this is what's gonna stop us from glitching when we hit asteroids, so if touching. So let's go to our um, sensing blocks and we're gonna grab a touching. Oh, we need an or statement in there. Let's grab two touching blocks and then we'll grab an or statement, put it in the if, in the if. Whoa, and I just knocked it out. Okay, this is what it should look like. If touching projectile or asteroid, then we're gonna delete it. So we're just gonna go, um, oh, and this is where we need to wait zero seconds, right above this if statement as well. So let's go wait zero seconds. So again, we uh, the asteroid is waiting 0 0.1 seconds. So we want this to happen before the other thing, I think, but there's still one other thing that's timed in there. So Jeffrey's just very, very carefully trying to arrange stuff so that everything happens in the same order by the, using these very precise little wait commands. Okay, so if touching projectile or touching asteroid. Okay, no, 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 the weight actually goes inside the if statement. The color uh, on my printout is a little off and I'm getting a little confused here. Okay, so the weight is inside the if statement, which is inside the forever. And then another if statement is going inside this if statement. And that says, if costume number is equal to one, So let's go to our looks menu, grab a costume number. If costume number is equal to one, then we're gonna play that sound effect. So for a bullet and we get destroyed, we don't wanna make the noise, right? So this is making sure, let me save my file. So we're just trying to make sure that it only makes the noise if it destroys itself and it's a saucer and not a bullet. So we're gonna go start sound, large bang or bang large. And now we need to delete the clone and get rid of it because it's been destroyed. So we'll go down to the bottom of control. Now the delete has to be two levels up. It has to be under the one if statement, but inside the other one. So this is the configuration here. So the if you can see is on a diagonal with the other one. So uh, just make sure this is arranged properly. If these if statements are messed up, it will not work. Okay, we should be able to shoot our saucers right now. Let's give it a little try. Green flag. All right, I didn't test that because I was too bad a player. These guys are, okay, here we go. Let's try that one more time. Now I will try and shoot that first guy when he appears. Oh, he hit an asteroid anyway, so he's dying properly. Everything appears to be working beautifully here, guys. Nice, for once things are actually working. How about my shield? I'm trying to my shield here, letter E. And yes, it worked. It's a little off center, but uh, okay, 
everything's working beautifully. All right, I'm going to take a little break and have a chat with my uh, friends on the live stream, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're uh, ready to, to finish up our small saucer. It's going to be mostly like the large saucer, except uh, just some minor tweaks to it. So let's get over there. So now I just took the liberty of copying all the copy over uh, all the files over. Just grab all the blocks except for the two that are already there. Drag them over to the small saucer. Wait for them to wiggle. Let me zoom in just to show you that again. That wiggly effect. So when I grab this guy and move him over, you can you see how You haven't done a transition. I still YouTube. haven't. What? No, I have. Uh, I have the, the YouTube just behind me, buddy. Uh, I can see the screen here. It's all fine. All right, anyway, so um, so we copy all the stuff over. It's gonna be a big mess here. So the first thing to do to clean it up is just right click anywhere on the desktop here and say clean up blocks. That will arrange everything into a nice vertical row here. Now let's just go through it quickly and make sure that everything's looking right. If there's any references to large saucer, like in the green flag here, we're gonna change this one to a small saucer. Then let's keep going through here. We're just going to be looking for any references to the object. Again, here at the bottom in the forever, we have a large saucer. We'll change that to small. And here in the bullet, we're going to change this from pick random to point in direction. So we're under the is bullet part. We're going to go to our motion blocks. We're going to grab a different block, the one that says point towards my ship so this guy's going to be a little deadlier he's going to point right at your ship instead of shooting in a random direction all right um play sound and the sound of course is going to be a saucer small sound so we got to change that twice and we'll do a small bang here bang small and i think that's it so we just changed all the references to the spaceship to small. We changed all the sound effects to small ones. And that's really all we have to do. And I'm pretty sure this is going to work. So let's give it a try. Click green flag. Now, we uh, the problem is, though, that this guy this guy's spawn time can't be the same as the other one. Let me have a look in my code here and see when this guy spawns. So um, there's a wait in here before he spawns. Let me find it. So here's where we're waiting from three to five seconds. We're gonna change that, tell him to wait uh, like uh, 30 seconds into the game. Actually, I'm gonna have him come up right away for now and we'll, uh, we'll change that time later. So we're gonna have to try change all these spawn times around later. Um, and I don't think anything else has to be changed here. So let's try that again and see if our little guy appears. Green flag, we'll just, Surf around a little bit until this guy appears. I don't want to make things too dead. dead. The guy, the little guy shooting at me and he kills me right away. His first act on the screen is to kill me. You gotta keep moving when these little guys start to appear. Whoa, they are deadly. Wow. And he shot me twice. Okay. Wow. These guys are nasty. Okay. Um. So that's all good. I'm gonna set these wait times back to normal again. So um, I'm gonna wait about maybe uh, 30 seconds for the first small saucer to arrive. And then it's gonna appear every maybe 20 to 30 seconds. They should appear less often than the big guys. The big guys, we're gonna have them wait. Remember, we've got them waiting three to five seconds. Let's have them wait. Uh, 20 to 30 seconds instead. So we're just going to adjust those wait times. Pretty well everything's done here, guys. We just have a little bit left to go, which is the um, game over event, which is... Okay, there's, a, there's an event here that uh, will make more asteroids appear uh, as you get to different levels. We have to add that, and then we're going to add the game over event, and then we will actually be done. So um, hang tight a little bit longer, guys. I'm sorry. There's so much code in here. I warned you guys, though. Um, okay, so let's start with the... Um, we'll go back to my ship. We're going to go back to uh, the wet... When I receive start round, the giant block here. When I receive start round, towards the bottom here, we are going to add... Let me save my file. 
Maya is bugging me to do that. Um, so um, if lives are less than one, oh no, we've already added all that stuff, eh? We added that at the beginning. I'm sorry, I forgot. So all we have left is the game over event. Beautiful, okay. So let's do the game over event and then we will be good to go, guys. So uh, I don't have a game over event on the screen here. We're gonna create a new one. So let's go and paint a new sprite really quickly. We're just gonna add a text element here. So let's go paint. I'm gonna grab uh, uh, the color green. A nice bright green color. I'm gonna grab my text tool. I'm gonna pick the font pixel right up here in the menu at the top. And that has a nice retro look to it. We're gonna just type Game over. Oh, so, oh, I hit the backspace key. Oh, mistakes when you're typing. So let's try that again. It's caps lock game over. Now, if you want it bigger, you'll have to just drag it out. Click on it with a black text tool and then change the size to whatever you want. It should be fairly small though, because back in the day, uh, in these arcade games, this was often just a little message, just about this size, right in the middle of the screen. Or actually, we'll put it a little bit lower than the middle of the screen so that it's not on top of our spaceship when we get started here. Okay, so that's all we have to do for, uh, for our design. Let's just do a bit of code here. The first thing we want to do, of course, is hide it. So when green flag clicked hide, let's go to our looks menu and hide. Then when I receive the game over message, let's go to control when I receive, uh, sorry, it's events. When I receive game over, we're going to show. Let's go to our looks menu. We'll go show. And then we'll go wait one second. And then we'll stop all. Now, I don't know if there's any other game over events elsewhere in the code for the game here. Oh, there's one other thing we have to do here which is, oh, and this is to make the background noise. We're just doing this in the game over, but we could really do it anywhere here, guys. So let, let's go to our event. Um, oh, but we don't have the sound effect here, right? Eh? So there's a sound effect called the beat one and beat two. I'm gonna see where I can find it. So uh, we're done with the game over event. We're just gonna do the sound effects uh, to make that bump, bump sound for asteroids. Um, I think it's probably in my ship. Is something called beat one and beat two. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so we'll code this inside my ship instead. It was supposed to be in the game over, but we don't have the sound effect. So let's go to our uh, events green flag. We're gonna go to our sounds, set volume. We want this to be quite a, a, a quiet sound. So we're gonna set, but well, we're gonna grab this one that says set pitch. No, that's not it. Where's the set volume? Oh, here it is down at the bottom of sound. Set volume to, 40% and then forever. We're just gonna keep shifting back and forth between those two beats and doing a little delay. So we're gonna go looks or so sound start sound beat one. Then we're gonna wait 0 0.4 seconds. I'm just gonna duplicate that start sound on the, on the block below it and I'll go beat two. There we go. Okay, so uh, fingers crossed, there might be one other game over event somewhere in the in the code here that I haven't found, but let's just test this out and see if this works. So uh, maximize screen. Let me save my file first before you guys bug me. Okay, let's test it out. I will intentionally kill myself. Really, I'm doing this on purpose. I'm not just a pathetic asteroids player. Okay, dead. 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 And then game over. And that works for me. The game runs for another couple of seconds, but it was basically over at that point. I wasn't able to shoot. I don't think I'm able to shoot after that happens. So we've got our shield variable here, our live variable. I haven't added any score variables. You guys can decide that for yourselves. You know, in the collision event where anything gets killed, you can get points for it. But I'm going to leave you guys to do that yourselves. So um, I am... 
uh, going to do a few more fun activities with my Kahoot, uh, sorry, a Kahoot and some other stuff with my live stream class. Um, but for those of you guys watching the edited broadcast, I'm going to sign off for now. I'm going to be back again in July. Stay tuned to this channel or subscribe to my newsletter to um, find out uh, when I'm coming back and in what form. It's not going to be daily anymore, but I am going to be uh, having multiple um, events during the week. There might there will probably be at least one live stream and maybe some other stuff um, released during the middle of the week. We're still walk, working on it. And if you guys haven't filled up my survey yet asking me what you think uh, I should be doing when I come back, then please fill that out. So in the meantime, have a great couple of weeks, guys, and I will see you in July.